Hi guys, it's Flood here. I wanted to make a video showing how to handle the ZG Crocs and Tigers that mages have been farming over the last few days. If you take a look at my gear here, you'll notice that it's nothing really too special. This farm's not going to show you possibly the most efficient route or necessarily the fastest kill method. As you can see, my gear is pretty underwhelming. It's mostly just stam and int gear with a little bit of hit. Um, but it gets the job done, and really you only need about 6,000 mana to do this farm. If you take a look at my talents, you can see I have nothing in the arcane tree. I spec all the way down to master of elements in the fire tree. That is really useful for shatter comboing. And then the frost tree is a typical shatter spec. Uh, you can take points out of improved blizzard if you want. Uh, that's optional. I have them in there for a duo farm that I'm working on with a friend. So as we get into the instance here, you'll see we start off by jumping off this ledge to the right. Uh, you want to keep your blink on cooldown uh, as much as possible. I'm going to be taking it a little slow, just to guys show you guys the route. One thing to keep in mind here is that you want to stay on the right hand side of the water here and stay relatively low. There are adders up on the ledge to the left and they can aggro pretty easily if you get a little too close to them. One tip is to blink along the bottom here, it just speeds up the farm a bit. Uh, so once you're on this rock, you're going to want, uh, you're going to, want to take a look for these adders. This is a pat. They pat all the way down to the bottom of the bridge, so if they're a little too close to the bottom of the bridge, don't risk it. Just wait for them to start patting back up. So we fall off and now we're going to cross the bridge. Sometimes there's some trolls that pat across this bridge and they just RP walk there. Uh, you definitely have to wait for them, um, which sucks, but it'll happen occasionally. So this is our first pack right here, our pack of Crocolis. So we want to make sure that we have full mana. We're taking a look at our mana gems, buffs. We want to make sure we have arcane intellect, frost armor, all that stuff up will help. One thing that's required for this part of the farm is some way of slow falling, so a noggin fogger or a light feather works great. So, we start by preparing ourselves with an ice barrier, and then we're going to cast slow fall on ourselves in a second. Mount back up and get ready to jump. So we want to jump across to Hakar's Island actually, and keep in mind that there are those trolls, those Zerker trolls to the right there. You definitely don't want to aggro them, so keep your distance. We want to wait till the, this group of Crocolis meets this group of Crocolis, and then we'll pull them and start kiting them around in a circle. This is very similar to the ZG zombie farm, if you guys have done the old version of the ZG zombie farm that uses uh, Shatter and Kona Cold. So, as you can see, as we run around in a circle on our mount, the crocs really can't hit us or anything, and they get nice and grouped up. We can get ready to Nova, and get ready for our first shatter combo. The more shatters you get off, the better, because actually, uh, with Master of Elements specced into it, uh, you actually will conserve quite a bit of mana, so these crocs will not only die faster, reducing your chance of uh, some hairy situations if you get like spell resists on your Nova or Cone of Colts, um, but it's just better overall, it's faster. If the pull goes perfect, we shouldn't have to use any consumables here other than the mana gem. I like to use my mana gem early in the actual pull, uh, just so that I can have potentially a second mana gem down the line if I need it. Uh, one thing you can also keep in mind is if, say, a pull is not going great, which I think later in this video you'll see a pull did not really go my way, um, you will probably be a little stressed for mana, especially if you don't have better gear. Uh, so having health pots, mana pots, uh, lips uh, can be very beneficial here. Uh, but on top of that, you also just want to manage your cooldowns effectively.
So you can see here we're finishing this pack off and we still have plenty of mana. And there we go, we scorched the last guy and we can collect our loot. Alright, so these next packs of crocs I would say are optional. If you're just starting to learn the farm, I wouldn't recommend doing them because they can be a little inconsistent. There's this one pat, you really have to watch out for him. Uh, we might wait for him here in a second, I forget uh, what we do. But basically, if they're coming around the corner while you're pulling these crocs, they can get pulled with them and then you'll just die. Uh, you can't really CC the soul flares, they'll just destroy you. So just wait for them. Um, that's one thing that you have to be a little patient with the pats in this instance. There's a ton of them, uh, and there's definitely quite a few along the route that we take. So, you know, in the meantime, make sure you have your mana gems up, drink, have enough biscuits and water and stuff. You can see here, I forgot to make my first mana gem. Not really a big deal. I still have my uh, citrine. One thing to note here is if you fall in the water, you're more than likely going to aggro piranhas, and they're not going to de-aggro easily from this spot. So if you can just fall down uh, by just maybe tapping W, uh, it'll make it so that you can mount up here, which helps a little bit for this pull. You can see I get dazed here, knocks me off my mount, but that's okay. Uh, I can just blink through. I use a lip on this pull. I've seen some videos where people don't necessarily lip, but they blink out and then swiftness pot away to get distance on these crocs. Um, I don't necessarily feel super comfortable with that. I, I don't think lips are really that expensive for what you're getting out of this farm. Uh, so I definitely would recommend having them. Plus it's nice having lips if something goes wrong on later pulls, uh, like if you get days on the tigers. And again, we're just going to pull them to this spot. So we have time to get a bandage off here. The crocs are going to take their time getting up this hill. I usually try to rank one blizzom as they come by. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is you should not cone a cold here. Uh, you want to go straight for a nova. Uh, if you cone a cold while they're still affected by blizzard and you have improved blizzard, uh, it's it's no good because the uh, improved blizzard is going to take over the cone of cold. So you won't actually cone a cold some of your mobs, which can be a real big issue. So you always want a nova if you uh, go for the rank one blizzard there. You really don't need to blizzard um, using a lip because they'll all be stacked up anyways, but uh, it definitely is a little bit of uh, insurance. You can see we have an issue there with the resist. I just blink through the mobs, so that not only gets that guy so he's not beating on me, but it also gives me a chance to line him up so we can get another cone of cold out on him. So you can see these mobs are giving us a little bit of trouble. Um, really nothing to fear about too much. If we get more than like three, I'd say we're in real big trouble, but one or two, it's not really that big of an issue. You just take wider turns. If they slow you, you gotta think on your feet a little faster, but um, you can just blink through them and keep kind of colding them. So you can see we're a little low on mana here. This is like a situation where I would use Evocate. It gives you plenty of mana to finish the pull. Really, it, you're not, it's not too cooldown intensive here. So if you need to use a cooldown to finish a pull, use a cooldown. I get dazed here. Just trying to keep these crocs off me. And we're going to go for another shatter spec.
So you can see, even with a few things going wrong, you can still recover the poles. It's just something you have to get used to. The crocs, they hit hard, but if only one's hitting you, it's not going to kill you. If you have, you know, three or four hitting you, then it's a different story. Um, so we're about nine minutes into the pull. Where we pulled these crocs from, the ones that we just killed, we actually can skip to the last pack of crocs, and it is a little bit faster. Um, but I'm going to show you an alternate route that I use to get to the tigers. Um, why you would do this is if you maybe aren't using lips and don't feel really comfortable pulling that pack of crocs that we just killed. Um, this is an alternate route through the dungeon that will uh, work perfectly fine for getting to not only the tigers but that last pack of crocs. Um, and you'll see the last pack of crocs in a second. It's, it's, it's right across from Akar's Island. So here we wait at this uh, end of the bridge. Uh, we want to wait for this panther pack in particular because if our invis pot runs out that we're about to use, uh, when we get over to that pot that they're pathing over right now, we are going to be in big trouble. So we just wait for them. Okay, so we have this pot, and now we want to just run over to the wall over here by the panther bosses. So, if we blink at the end, you can actually blink at the end of your invis pot if you don't think you're going to make the distance in time, uh, and that'll help you avoid getting detected by mobs. And then if you just hug the wall to the left here, you should be able to avoid these paths altogether. Sometimes there's a troll uh, zerker path that comes through here. You can hide on the raptor or on the panther boss stairs and that's a perfectly effective way. Um, so there's a group of crocolis across the river there. I'm not going to pull those just yet because that adds a lot of time to the run. You see the Zerker here? He's actually really close to the tiger area and since he's so far up there it's going to be a while before I can even run past him basically. Um, the pathway there is pretty narrow and I don't want to risk it. So that's when I would opt in to killing these five extra crocs, pretty much while we wait for that zerker to pat all the way back over to us so that we can cross them in an area that has a little bit more space. So we pull these crocs, get our nova off, and this place has some really janky geometry, really annoying slopes that clay tablet and stuff in the center the crocs can kind of get stuck or split on so you have to be really careful here I, you'll see in a couple seconds that they definitely get split on me luckily it's only five crocs so they don't do a lot of damage there's they're very easy to recover if things go wrong um, you just got to take it slow So we're low on mana, but we can just wand this last guy to death. And now we're going to loot and check on that Zerker, make sure his pat is in a much better spot for us to cross him. 
and it is. So now he's about halfway back across the path, which means that that pack of Proclus was well worth killing. Um, and we can just run right past him and straight to the tigers. So you're going to want to run to this wall first. There is a couple of packs on the right that you want to avoid. And as long as you hug the wall, you shouldn't have any issues. Now I usually run to this little cube in the ground and eat, drink up, get ready for the pull. Next we're going to be pulling these tigers directly ahead of us. Throw up our ice barrier. Um, so there's quite a few tigers here. They can dismount you if they get a daze off. Uh, keep that in mind. That's one thing that lips are really good for. You can either ice block or just lip straight up. Um, but basically, you want to get them grouped up very similar to the crocolisks. Get a Nova off and start shatter comboing them. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that that Zerker path that we had to pass does like pat close enough to the point where if you're near the path with these tigers, uh, while you're kiting them, you could potentially uh, aggro them. So you have to be really, really careful. You'll see there's actually two Zergers that do that. But you can see here, right now, there's no Zergers, so we're just taking really nice wide turns around our little tiger area here. Tigers are getting nice and stacked, so I go for the Nova. They tickle me a little, and we go for a shatter combo. One thing to keep in mind here is that the cubs will actually fear. You see I had one cub fear just from getting double critted. Um, they run for a very long time while they're feared. You do not want them getting uh, too far away from you while they're feared because they can run into different packs. They, I've had them run into the actual tiger boss before and that was just a nightmare. Um, but there's also the pack up near the actual river that is still uh, kicking. So you want to make sure that you don't let those baby tigers get anywhere near those packs. You want to just kill them. Uh, if that means using a little extra mana spamming arcane explosion, that's well worth it because um, these tigers can cause some serious issues if you don't kill them immediately. The elites luckily don't do that, so all you do is just shatter combo them, just like the Crocolisks. Just like the Crocolisks. So here are the two Zerkers that actually path through. So these are the guys you want to be careful of. I actually make a mistake here. So there's a hoodoo pile that you can loot. Um, it's pretty much guaranteed at the end of all of these tiger pulls, which is why it's so good to add these tigers because um, you can get like your blood scythe out of there. Uh, hoodoo piles also have some of the trinket stuff. But you can see I accidentally uh, used the hoodoo pile uh, while mobs were a little too close. Hoodoo piles have an aggro radius on mobs nearby, but then Hakar also mind visioned me while the mobs were killing me. So I thought for a second that I might have been safe here because they were friendly, and then this guy just still goes berserk. So uh, moral of this story is wait for the Zerkers to get out of the way before you actually loot the hoodoo piles. You can leave them up for a bit. I like pulling the last pack of Crocolis up to the tigers, um, but with a little editing magic we can get back to where we were. Uh, unfortunately, I lost out on probably some of the loot, but um, it was just a really unique situation. <laughs> so, let's start the timer up again, and we'll be on our way to the last pack. If you hug the wall and round the corner here, uh, watching for that pat in particular, fall down onto this ramp. Um, so this is the long way to this group of crocolis. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in the video, that one group that we killed across the island, we could have skipped. Um, 
right across the water here to these two packs, and we could fight them right around where they're living on the bay here. Uh, I don't opt for that because I don't have enough damage output, I think, to be able to kite them. And if you're kiting them on the ramp, Cone of Cold can have uh, very odd ranges, which can make it really inconsistent. Uh, so I honestly just don't risk it. I, th I think it's easier to take the long way around. And if you're fast and efficient and making the right decisions on when you should be killing and when you should be moving through pats, um, you can actually get this down to probably about a 15 minute farm regardless. So um, yeah, I, I just think that this makes more sense for me. But with better gear and uh, perhaps a little bit more knowledge on how Kona Cold works on slopes, you'll be fine. Uh, so one thing we're going to be looking out for here is that guy, um, that one Zerker marked with circle. He is by the tiger area. That's where I like killing these last groups of crocs. Again, you can kill them on the shore. I just don't think it's necessarily as safe or consistent as just pulling them to a more flat area. Uh, so I'm going to edit this out. We're going to skip in time. And here we are at the um, Zerker. You can see the Zerker pat. Uh, it's been about a minute and a half, so not great to add that to a farm, but not really a big deal considering this video is not supposed to showcase speed. So we pull that pack, then we run into this pack. Make sure we grab all the crux. If they melee you and get slowed, it's not really a big deal at this point. Uh, they're going to be able to path up the hill just fine, so they don't really have an issue with that. Again, just make sure you hook the corner here. And now we wait for the crocs to path back up to us. And we basically treat them the same way as the tigers. So we're taking a wide berth around. You can see they're getting grouped up slowly but surely. And we will be able to get them with the Nova. We have one Zerker that we want to keep an eye on doesn't look like he's going to be too big of an issue because we can just Nova the Crocs over here. So he'll stay well out of range. Go for our Shatter combo. If you can get a resist, if you get a resist here, or say a croc is a little bit too far out of range for your cone of cold, just be really wary of those ads. If they're padding by, you definitely want to make sure you're not blinking into them um, or running near them. They have a pretty large aggro radius, so you don't want to upset them. But you can see we have plenty of room here. finish the farm like we started with a group of about nine crocolisks. Alright, so that pretty much concludes the ZG farm. Uh, one thing I'll say is patience definitely a virtue with this one. And take it easy. Be safe.